Hello, my name is Manuel Ribeiro and I'm a PhD student at EPFL. Today, I'll present our work, Characterizing Alternative Monetization Strategies on YouTube. This is joint work with Ishing, Thomas and Moore from Cornell and with my advisor, Robert West. So, if you consume content on YouTube, you may have noticed that YouTubers have resorted to creative monetization strategies to make ends meet. True Brown and Blue, for example, is an educational channel that produces incredibly high quality videos, making around a dozen per year. Here, on the right, I show the video description for one of his videos. Note that he manages to earn money while producing these high quality videos by using Patreon, which allows individuals to support creators directly, as well as by selling merchandise, here notebooks, whose profits help the production of content. But not only high quality educational channels use these alternative monetization strategies. This is a video of a notoriously misogynistic channel on YouTube called Sandman which is a part of a masculinist movement called MGTOW, short for men going their own way. Sandman appeals to a niche audience and his videos don't accumulate many views. However, he's also able to earn money through PayPal, Subscribestar, which is a patron alternative, and by selling products related to his masculinist movement. Broadly speaking, in this paper, we refer to these ways of making money as alternative monetization strategies, practices that piggyback on YouTube's content distribution infrastructure to create money streams between viewers and content creators. Channels have very good financial incentives to use such strategies. For example, Salmon was demonetized by YouTube, which means he can't uh, share revenue from ads. Tree Brown and Blue has a very high production cost per video. And both creators appeal to a loyal audience willing to pay for the content they produce. So they have good, uh, very good incentives to depart from the typical way of monetizing on YouTube, which is to just uh, share uh, ad revenue with the platform. We argue in our paper that understanding these alternative monetization strategies is a way to understand the incentives behind the creation of content online. This can help platforms promote the production of some types of content, for example, educational or high quality content, and decrease the production of others. For example, content deemed harmful. In this work, we take a first look at these alternative monetization strategies and analyze how prevalent they are, how they are related to productivity, that is uh, how many videos channels produce, and how they are exploited by those creating harmful content. To study these questions, we use data sets capturing popular YouTuber creators, sorry, popular YouTubers. Uh, we use the universe data set with over 71 million uh, YouTube videos, as well as list of channels known to be problematic from the existing literature with around 600 channels. We begin by coming up with a taxonomy by iteratively coding around 3000 videos sampled across content categories, years, channel sizes, and data sets. We end up with a taxonomy with four different categories, some of which we already showed in the examples. Uh, the categories are products by channels, which consist of selling product, where which is an, a strategy that consists of selling products associated with the channel, like Tree Brown and Blue's notebooks, requesting for donations, like the usage of Patreon, uh, using affiliate marketing, like giving coupons and using sponsored links to to e-commerce websites like Amazon and requesting cryptocurrency donations. This slide's a bit hand wavy as this is an eight minute talk, but it basically shows how we managed to annotate our entire data set, which consists of hundreds of thousands of channels and millions of videos uh, with a few annotated examples from uh, the aforementioned categories. Specifically, we use a bootstrapping approach that exploits the fact that links on YouTube descriptions often come preceded by a short explanation of what they mean. So for example, um, when you're selling merch, you, you may say buy t-shirts and include a link to, uh, to, to the website where you, 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 you can buy t-shirts or donate to my Patreon and then a link to the Patreon account. In our method, we basically create a bipartite graph with the domains and the words that precede those domains in the video descriptions and set specific words and specific domains as belonging all to one of the categories. So for example, Amazon is typically used as, um, as merch to sell merch, sorry, uh, to, for affiliate marketing. So we set Amazon as affiliate marketing. Then we run label propagation on this graph and obtain final labels for all words and all domains. 
We carefully validate this method and we find that it actually works quite well, even though it's pretty simple. Okay, so having annotated our data, we now turn back to our research questions. I'll try to give concise answers for each, but check the paper for more. First, we find that alternative monetization is very common on YouTube and is growing in popularity. This plot shows the percentage of channels that have adopted different alternative monetization strategies between 2008 and mid-2019 in the universe dataset. Note that there's an increasing trend for all categories and the numbers are quite expressive. For example, over 5% of the channels sold merch, around 20% of the channels asked for direct donations, and around 35% of channels used affiliate marketing links. Next, we examine the relationship between the usage of alternative monetization strategies and productivity on the platform. To do that, we basically matched 5,730 creators on things like number of videos, views, and categories, considering a period of three months. So basically, we calculated these values for a period of three months, and we basically matched two channels. One channel that adopted um, alternative monetization in the month after those three months, and one channel that did not adopt an alternative monetization strategy. But they had similar stats for the three months before this event happened. And then we compared uh, how many videos these channels created in the next 12 months. Overall, we found that content creators that adopted alternative monetization strategies subsequently produced more videos when compared to their matched counterparts. In this plot, we show the average number of videos created by the two groups we matched. Creators that started video monetization at, at month zero, and here's like alternative monetization, not like regular one, produced around 2.5 additional videos in the month that followed, month one. And even after 12 months, um, there was still a significant difference, although it decreased to one additional video for the content creator that adopted an alternative monetization strategy. Last, we analyzed whether channels associated with problematic content were more likely to use alternative monetization strategies than randomly matched regular channels from the universe data set. So here we basically matched for, uh, around 500 channels uh, from universe, which is um, the data set, the, the general data set of YouTube that uh, we, we used in this work with uh, these problematic channels that we obtained from the literature. And we basically got channels with similar creation dates, uh, similar number of views, similar number of videos, and similar categories. Overall, we found that, yeah, problematic channels are more likely to use alternative monetization strategies. And in this plot, for example, we show the percentage of channels in the matched sample using different kinds of alternative monetization strategies. And here you can see that actually problematic creators are more likely to use all the different kinds of alternative monetization strategies in our platform, in our taxonomy, sorry. So in conclusion, alternative monetization strategies are prevalent and their popularity is growing. Their usage seems to be linked with video productivity on YouTube and creators associated with harmful content are more likely to use them. That's what I had for today. Please check the paper for details and I'll gladly answer any questions.